Hey what's up, welcome back to another quick flutter tutorial. In this one I'm going to teach you how to store data in the device's local storage using a database called ISA. So you can go to isa.dev to check it out in more detail, but I can show you real quick how to do the basic CRUD operations, which if you don't know it stands for create, read, update and delete data. So to demonstrate this let's create up a very basic notes app. So I've opened up a new Flutter project and just to keep everyone on the same page, in my main function I'm running my app and I've got this pages folder with the notes page and it's just returning a blank scaffold so you should just have a white blank app like this. Now the first thing we need to do is to import the ISA database dependencies. So I'll link the documentation below but this is just what I'm following. So we just want to grab all this and get the packages. So just then we should have added three packages. And I'm also going to add another one, the provider package, just for some simple state management. Cool, so if, what we just did is if you go to your pubspec.yaml, you should see these four things that we just imported. Cool, now let's create a new folder called models. And the first thing we have to do is create a model of the note. Let's start by importing ISA and let's create our class. So for the note, I just want to know the ID and you can say ISA.auto increment. So this will just start from zero and then go to one, two, three each time you create a new note. And then the most important thing for a note is just the text, which is a string. And I'm going to put the late tag here because we're going to initialize it later. Cool. So this is how you create a regular class. Now for ISA, you're going to need to add this line part note.g.dart. So it's going to be this exact same file name as what we had before, but we're going to put the G in there for generated. Okay, so this line is needed to generate the file, and then we're going to run this command. And we need to put a collection tag before this note. We're basically going to run this little command. So simply what we're doing here is we want to save some things in our ISR database, right? Now, because I created a custom object like this note, and this will generate this new file for us. And that basically just allows us to store these notes in the database. It says, do not modify by hand. So don't touch this, but this step is just required so that we can save our notes in the database. Cool, so now that we've done that, let's create one more file here called note database. And in here, I want to have all of the operations. So the first thing we need to do is just to initialize the database. And then we're going to do the CRUD operations. So create, read, update, and delete. So using this, we can create a nice little note app. Okay, so for us specifically, we're gonna create a note and save to the database. We're going to read some notes from the database, update them, and also delete a note. So let's fill this out. Now at the beginning, we want to have the ISA object and we're going to create the method to initialize all this. So the first thing is we just need to know the directory where we're going to save it. So at the top, if you just import the path provider, this was one of the packages we imported at the beginning of the video. And so this thing just helps us get the path directory for where all of this is going to be saved. So await ISA open, and we just need to pass it the schema, which if you type note schema, this is just telling us the type of data inside. Cool, and for the directory, we can just pass it the directory path. Cool, so that's how you initialize it at the beginning. Now we also need to have a list of notes. So I'm just gonna call this current notes, and it's just going to be an empty list at the beginning. And let's start off with creating a new note. So to make this more clear, I'm going to call it add note. And as a parameter, I'm just going to require a string that is a text. Cool. So final new note equals, we're going to create our note object. So once we created a new note object, let's then save it to the database. So we can say isa.write transaction. And we want to look for the put. Cool. And then after that, we want to reread from the database. 
Okay, just to update the changes. So let's fill out the read method here. And again, I'm just gonna, to be clear, I'm just gonna call it fetch notes. We can say isa.notes where find all. So this will just grab all of the notes in the database. So let's just clear our current notes and then just add it all in. Cool, and then now it's time for the update. So if I wanna update a note, then I just need to know the ID. And we want to also know the new text. So let's firstly get the existing note by identifying with that ID. And if this note isn't null, so if it exists, then let's assign the new text. Okay, and then we can write the transaction again, isar.notes put the existing note. So this will update it. And then we can reread everything by calling the fetch notes method. And lastly, let's delete a note. So for this, all I need is just the ID. And then we can say write transaction, and then delete. And let's fetch the notes again. Awesome, so that's the CRUD operations for the note database. So remember this initialize method? Let's come back to our main.dart file, and we're going to initialize the note database. So firstly, we're going to do widgets flutter binding ensure initialized. And let's change this to an asynchronous function so that we can await the node database and initialize. Cool. Now to create the actual node app, I'm going to use provider for some simple state management. And so I've actually made a separate tutorial on provider and you can check that out if you need. But I can show you here real quick how to use it. We've already imported it at the start of the video. So if you come to our node database, then we can say extends change notifier. And the other thing we need to do is just to go to this fetch notes. And I'm gonna say notify listeners. And what that does is we're going to notify the widgets that are listening to these changes. So pretty much it will update on the screen. So just a little bit of setting up to do in the main function. When we run my app, wrap it in the change notifier provider. And in the create field, we want to create the note database. And then in the child, we can return my app. Cool, and then once you save that, it's probably a good idea to just kill the app and run it again. And now we can come to our notes page and start filling this out. So from here on out, I'll show you how to do the UI and the buttons and all that to connect our database so that we have a simple notes app. So I'm just going to start off with an app bar, just saying notes. And we're going to need a floating action button. So you can see it's that little button on the bottom right. And we can give it an icon. Now let's come up to the top here and I'm just going to create those four methods real quick, the CRUD operations. And what this is for is to deal with any UI related stuff. So for example, like when we create a note and we click on this button, we want to show a dialog and have a little box here with a text field so that we can actually get input from the user. So this is all like the UI related stuff. So if you just save this and you run it and you click on that plus button, you can see it's gonna open up this dialog box with the text field inside and you can start typing in. And so now if you wanna access what the user typed in, we need a text controller. And so if you look at the text field underneath, it says controller and we can give it our text controller. Cool, now I think we're gonna need a button. So if you go to the actions, let's have a create button. So if we click on this button on pressed, let's say context.read note database, and then now you can access all of those options from before. So we wanna add note, and let's just give it the text in the controller. Cool, so this line we'll just add it to the database, and then let's give it a child. Now 
Now, one thing is when you click this create button, we actually want to pop the dialogue, right? We want to dismiss the box. So we can say navigator.pop and that will pop the box. So now we have the ability to add notes into the database. We're going to need to read the notes so that we can actually display it on our screen. So let's fill out this read notes method and fetch notes. Sweet, so now that it's all loaded up, let's come down to the build method and access the database. And create the list of notes. Sweet, so now it's in current notes. We can now create a list view.builder. And we want to firstly get the individual note by going through each index, like 0, 1, 2, 3. And then now we can return the list tile UI. Oops, I forgot to give it the item count. So that's just going to be current notes.length. Okay, let's try. So if I save this and I open it up, you can see that there's the notes. Now, one problem is it's actually not showing up on the startup at the beginning of the app. So in the initial state, let's read notes. And I think we, should, we can actually change this from watch to read. Yeah, that works. So what we just did here is on app startup, we can fetch the existing notes. Cool, so now we can add notes in. Now one thing that we should improve on is once we added a new note, we should clear the controller because it's still got the previous note in there. Sweet, now if you come down to our list tile UI, we need some buttons here. So on the trailing, I want to have a row because I want two buttons. An edit button and then a delete button. So that's going to be for the update note method. And so for the update note method, let's require the note that we're updating as a parameter. And let's pre-fill the current note text into our controller. and show the dialog with the text field. Cool, so this is very similar to the previous dialog box. So if you have any questions, just let me know below in the comments. We're going to clear the controller, pop the dialog. And that's pretty much it. And then let's just fill out the delete node as well. So for this one, we just need to know the ID and then just go to the node database and then delete. Sweet. So now let's come back to our UI and create icon buttons for the update. and the delete button as well. Okay, awesome. If you click on the delete, yeah, it all works. And editing works as well. Sweet, so that's how you do CRUD operations with ISAR database. Sweet, so now that we know the basics for how to store data using ISAR, in the next video, let's decorate it up and make the notes app more complete and aesthetically beautiful.